Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to continue our series on my visit to Supermicro with a look at the Supermicro Outdoor Edge system. Now, I'm usually pretty good at telling what content is gonna be popular on STH and what isn't gonna be popular, and so when we saw this system, which at that time, a lot of people referred to it as a Supermicro IP65 pole system, you know, we thought, ah, it's like, oh, well, it's really not gonna be that popular. Cliff wrote the piece and I was like, oh, it's gonna be whatever. And it turns out that I was totally wrong. Now, there were actually a ton of people that went and saw this on the STH main site, read the article, we got a lot of feedback on it, and it turns out that a lot of people that read STH actually work at service providers, so I probably should have known this, but it actually was a lot more popular than I thought it was gonna be. Now, to give you some idea of where the Supermicro Outdoor Edge system, sometimes called the IP65 system, is set to be deployed, I went down to our local cell tower just because I wanted to give you some sense in case you're not used to looking at these things. And if you zoom in on this picture, what you actually see is that the service provider guys totally love poles. I mean, they even put on this particular example, poles latched on to other poles. Now there's a lot of reasons for that in terms of directing your antennas and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, all of these little poles are just kind of how this industry has grown up. So having a server that you can mount on a pole is actually a big deal. And one of the other nice things about being mounted on a pole is that you don't take up the footprint at the bottom of the pole, which could be very valuable. In this case, in Mountain View, land is very valuable. So that kind of makes sense. And if you look at the bottom of the mobile tower, there's a little fence in area and you actually have all of the power and bits to go and run all the antennas and all the stuff on the pole, but you don't necessarily have a whole lot of extra room for an entire data center. Now, one actually little interesting bit that a lot of people don't know is that actually, if you look behind this pole, what you see is that there's a building and that building, I've actually had beers with the guy that claimed to have worked there. And he told me that's actually the Cisco WebEx data center. So this is actually kind of a weird pole because there actually is a data center that's just behind it but that's more of the exception rather than the rule. So the Supermicro Outdoor Edge system is designed to be integrated directly onto the pole structure. Now we just did a news post on the announcement. We didn't actually get to review or have hands on the hardware. And since that was published, I mean, we've had some things like, I don't know, a global pandemic and stuff like that. So we haven't really been able to get hands on the hardware. But in April, we had a comment from an astute reader, Hank W, that read, and let me quote this, Please review this exclamation point. Well, Hank, this is a little hard for us to review, but during my visit to Supermicro, I saw one of these and I said, oh my gosh, guys, we have to go and take a look at this thing. And I just really wanted to go poke at it and see what makes this thing work. And so let's get in the car and check this thing out. So I'm headed over straight down 237 right now. And the purpose of this is that we're actually gonna go take a look at some products that I would normally take a look at during trade show coverage, but because we don't have trade shows this year, we didn't get to go do. Now I got to send Supermicro a list of all the products that I wanted to go look at. I got to, you know, make that list myself. I get to say whatever the heck I want, but Supermicro said that they'd get the products for me. They'd also get as many product managers as were feeling comfortable coming into the office as soon as the shelter in place order was over. Now, just for full disclosure here, Supermicro did provide the products because we're gonna do it in their demo room. They're providing the office space. They're also filming. Anybody who's watched this series will notice that I had a mask on in every other video, including the ones that we've already published and the ones that are gonna be published from this day that we did at Supermicro. And this is the only video that I don't. And the reason for that is that we didn't have the product manager in the room, so I'm not there with anybody. And I actually just had him on the phone and said, hey, I got some, got some questions about this thing. Can you answer them? And so this is the one that I'm not wearing a mask for. Again, masks are good, but not doing it in this one because it's just me standing there. This is the Supermicro Outdoor Edge System. And this is something that we did a piece on a little while ago, and we actually had a lot of reader feedback on it. In fact, more than I even thought that we were going to. And so when I had, saw that this thing was in the demo room, I said, we're definitely gonna go take a look and open it up and see what's inside. And so this is the Supermicro outdoor edge system. And what it looks like and why it's sitting here in this configuration is it's actually designed to be mounted on a pole. So if you think about when you have a radio tower for something like a cell phone tower, something like that, you typically have a little shed on the bottom 
that holds all the really expensive equipment. And instead what this design is saying, hey, put this up on the pole so you don't need that shed, you don't need the real estate and to lease the real estate down below to put all that expensive equipment. So what you have inside is actually really interesting. So we can open this thing up and there's actually two locking latches on either side, but you open it up. There we go. And what you see is a server, but with a whole lot of stuff around it. So this is the main server and we're gonna get to that in a second because what I really wanna do is show off all of the other little bits to this solution that aren't this server. Specifically, if you look over here, now this entire door is actually a heat exchanger. And the idea here is that this thing is designed to operate into pretty hot outdoor temperatures. Also, you have to do things like withstand lightning strikes because you're on a pole. And so the idea with this whole heat exchanger is that you need to cool a server, which can generate a lot of heat itself, even on a hot day outside, because you don't have internal ACs that you would normally have in a data center. So this is actually a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be just in terms of door. I thought it was just a you know simple little door chassis and it is definitely not. It's weather sealed and there's a whole lot going on in there in terms of heat exchanger. Now you're gonna see that we have the control cables that go to this control board. Now this control board, these are actually little LEDs and I didn't realize it the first time I looked at it, somebody had to point it out to me, but these are actually little LEDs and they tell you the status of the system. So if something is not going right and you have somebody out there opening this up and trying to figure out, diagnose what's going on, this, these LED indicators actually kind of give you that system status. You also see that we have things like the power distribution that come out of that, but then one of the really cool bits that you might not have noticed, or maybe you did, was that there's this little switch down here. And if you have a refrigerator or something like that, you might actually be familiar with this technology. This is the chassis intrusion switch, which tells you and tells the system if the cover has been opened and you can click it over and over. That's actually kind of a pretty low tech way to do this, but at the same time, that's just kind of how everybody does intrusion detection switches these days. So hmm, kind of interesting. Okay, and then we get to this box right here. Now this thing just looks like a giant black blob. Behind the server, there's actually a thermal blanket which heats the server. So if you think about a server that's on a pole outside, sometimes in some environments, maybe not necessarily Silicon Valley, but in other environments, it gets cold. And so that thermal blanket actually allows this server to continue operating even at temperatures such as minus 40 degrees centigrade. Now for the server itself, it's actually kind of hard to see in here. And most of the IO for the server is down on this side and you have fans over here. So what I noticed when I was in this demo room is I said, hey, wait, what is that box over there? And I actually found a version of this server sitting in the demo room. So we're gonna go take a look at that. So this enclosure, some of you on STH may have seen before, because this is the Supermicro E403 chassis. Now, that doesn't sound like anything really exciting. And in fact, if you look at this view of this server, it's probably not the most exciting thing unless you're like a fan aficionado or something like that. You can see three sets of redundant fans and that provides cooling for the rest of the system. Now, when we flip this server around, this is not exactly what's in the outdoor edge server because there's a couple differences. And one of the biggest differences that you're gonna notice if you look kind of underneath that system versus this one is that this has a single AC power supply while the demo system that's set up over in the room over here actually has two different redundant DC power supplies. So something that of course, a lot of network operators will want is redundant power and DC power. And that's how they're providing that in the solution. Now you also get a lot of really interesting things here, such as you get 10 gig networking, you have standard things like out of band management ports, comm ports, you have other features, which are these nice expansion slots. These three expansion slots let you do some pretty interesting things. For example, you can use 100 gig networking cards for doing some of the translation that you need at these network speeds, such as the Intel N3000 card with the FPGA on it. Another option that you have is to use something like a GPU. So if you're using a pole mounted server, for example, to do smart cities, to do you know camera analytics for traffic lights or other reasons, you can actually put GPUs in here and do the inferencing that you need at the edge. Now, inside this particular server, we have a Intel Xeon D2100 series CPU, we have memory, and all the things that you normally find in a standard edge server, and they're all inside this nice modular package. 
So of course, since this is a fairly standard building block, there's a lot of different options. And I think Supermicro, if you're in the market for these types of devices, they can probably go find different Xeon D flavors to put in here, but super flexible, lots of IO, lots of expansion capability in an edge platform. So that Supermicro E403 server is the building block that goes right here in the overall outdoor edge server solution. Now, this is really cool because now we have standard x86 compute. We can have things like virtualization and we can run containerized applications, NFV, right on the box that sits on the cell phone tower pole. Overall, this is a really cool solution. And this is one that we actually covered on STH. And at the same time, just getting to get some hands-on time and play with it, I now know a heck of a lot more about it. And hopefully you guys do too. Now, there are a couple things I just kind of wanted to cover that I didn't get to cover when I was there. And the first one is you kind of look at the chassis and you look at how Supermicro builds things in building blocks and you realize that, well, this particular unit is using a Xeon D2100 series, but there's really no reason that it couldn't use, you know, say an Atom processor, a Xeon scalable processor, or anything else out there. And so it's actually something that's built very flexible because it is built on Supermicro around one of Supermicro's essential building blocks. I don't think this is something that we're gonna review in the next couple months just because there's some requirements that we just don't necessarily have, like, I don't know, 5G infrastructure and poles and stuff in the lab yet. But it is something that I think is really cool. And as folks are thinking about how do we save on real estate? How do we go and deploy things for 5G? How do we go build out networks? What if we have to have some video surveillance or something like that and we need something on a pole? Well, this is a really good example of a solution that might work for you. Hey, and if you've made it this far, why don't you hit subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see the next time we come out with one of these videos. I think this is video like number five of eight in this series. And so we have a couple more that are really cool coming as well. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.